guys, today I would like to take you to Japan. Well, you probably already know that in Japan people live for a very, very long time and they're very healthy. So they're surely not something that we don't know here in the West. So I dug in deeper and I realized that it's probably because all the amazing fermented products that they eat on a daily basis. So that's what the video is going to be about. I'm going to show you four different fermented Japanese products and also give you five recipe ideas so you know exactly what to do with them. And I will also share with you all the benefits and you know all the reasons why you should consume them. So let's get started. The first three products I'm going to talk about are actually miso and miso variations. And miso in Japanese means fermented beans. Miso has been around for thousands of years. It's not something Japanese, it actually originated from China thousands of years ago. And the scientists think that it arrived to Japan around 10th century before Christ, so that's around 3,000 years ago. And since then, it's been big in the whole Asia, from China to Japan to Thailand. And variations of miso are eaten everywhere, and in Japan, they would have at least one cup of miso soup every single day. Miso has an amazing, strong, rich, and very complicated taste, which is amazing for whatever you're making. And it's actually something called umami in Asia which is like the fifth taste. It just gives a different dimension to your food. Um, but it's not just about the taste, it's actually full of amazing nutrients and antioxidants as well. So miso is chock full of uh, minerals like zinc, which is very important for healthy uh, skin, also copper, manganese, calcium, vitamin E, um, vitamin K2, which by the way, the Japanese miso doesn't have much of. Um, if you are concerned about vitamin K2, you should go for that um, for the Chinese one because they use a different kind of bacteria to ferment it. The longer it is fermented, the more nutrients it's going to have. And also the darker it's going to be and the stronger the flavor is going to be. At least in America, most of the soybeans are um, made of GMO or genetically modified soy. And if you're concerned about that, I surely am, you need to do your own research, but I don't think it's a good idea to consume them. In that case, you should definitely go for organic miso, which is not going to use any GMO soybeans. So why is miso so good for you? Well, first of all, it's a little bit controversial. Um, studies are not sure about that yet, but so far it seems that it can um, stop the growth and spread of cancerous tumors because of a certain feed of nutrient that it has. It's also a great source of lactobacteria because it's fermented, which is going to keep your digestion really strong and repopulate your bacteria, which in turn is going to make your immune system much stronger. And it's also a great source of linoleic acid, which is something that makes your skin super soft and young looking, which is awesome if you're looking for something um, that could give you clear skin or if you are concerned about aging. Let's start by a healthy broccoli and lentils recipe for lunch. And it's going to be made with a brown rice miso, which is also called genmai miso. And it's very, very dark, very salty, and perfect for sauces like this or soups. So first I start by uh, boiling lentils, which were pre-soaked overnight. And then I also steam broccoli with a bit of salt. And then I um, take a tablespoon of miso, add a bit of warm water, and mix it until it forms a nice, even paste. And then I take the broccoli, put it in a bowl, uh, top with lentils and then sprinkle with that uh, miso paste that I've just made. And then I also like adding a tablespoon of ghee just because I think it makes it taste so much better. But it's up to you because ghee isn't really Japanese.
I'll start by uh, melting some butter in a pan and then add some onion. Cook it for around 10 minutes with the lid closed until it softens. Then I'm adding some carrots and some potatoes. Uh, mix everything together and cook it for around 10 minutes more until it softens a bit. Then I add around 2 liters of vegetable stock, stock or bone broth, whatever I have on hand. And add some salt, some curry and some ginger. and I mix it with some more water until it forms a paste and then I take the soup that is ready by now and I add some coconut cream that perfect touch of creaminess and then I add that miso paste that I've just made mix everything together and it's ready it's one of the best soups I've ever eaten and it's just amazingly balancing for your body let's move on to the next product which is Amazaki and I love this thing I cannot wait to get again. Amazaki in Japanese means sweet sake. You probably already heard of this uh, rice vodka that they make in Japan and it's called sake. So this one is like the sweet version of it. And it's the most wonderful, creamy, dairy-free, naturally sweet dessert in the world. It's so, so versatile. You can use it as you know sweetener for your porridge, for any kind of dessert you're making. Um, you can put in pancakes, you can put in your muffins, you can put in your uh, anything you're making really because it has a lot of protein and it's naturally sweet and it has a really nice texture. You can enhance anything you cook with it. It's also full of B vitamins and it's full of active enzymes. And that's why you need to make sure you don't uh, cook it. Just make, put it into your foods once they're ready. And because of those enzymes, all the fats and proteins and uh, carbs are going to be pre-digested before they even get into your belly. So it's going to be super, super easy for your body to absorb and you know use all those nutrients. It's perfect if you have a really weak stomach or digestive system. It's perfect for kids as a healthy alternative for dessert. Time for two desserts and they're both my favorites. So for this first one, you need to slice an apple and also a pear. And then you also need to take out all the seeds and all the hard bits. You can also peel it. I prefer to peel it, but it's really up to you, whatever you prefer. And then you need to arrange all the slices nicely on a flat, big plate. And then you need to top each slice with a bit of amazaki, just like, you know, topping with butter. It's going to take you a couple of minutes. And then the next thing is sprinkling it with some raw cacao for a nice bitterness. And then also sprinkle some ginger on top and here we go, it's ready. A combination of ginger and cacao is going to give you energy and also boost your metabolism. So your digestion will be on fire. And it will also be much easier to get rid of any excess fat. Now this next dessert is my favorite out of all these five recipes. First of all, you need a bit of amazaki in a small bowl and then add some coconut cream or coconut milk if you want it to be lighter. And then you need to clean that spoon because it's quite sticky and you don't want to waste anything. Then stir everything together, add a bit of vanilla powder and some cinnamon powder and then clean everything up because it needs to look beautiful and here you go, it's ready. Before eating, just mix everything together again to make sure that all the tastes blend and it's just the most beautiful, the most creamy and the healthiest dessert in the world. I really hope that you like this kind of, uh, you know, format of videos. I think I'm going to make more of them and the next video I'm working on is uh, five ways to make to make porridge so keep your eye out for that and i think that is it for today thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye